This is Goku Sun DBZ, and welcome back for another Top 10 Sunday list. Now, originally I was going to do Top 10 Street Fighter characters today, but, one, since I have to go somewhere in a few hours, a special place, that's why I'm a little more dressed up today. But, because of that, I thought instead I would do a special top 10 list I was planning on doing next month in June. But here it is today. And today, I will be counting down the top 10 world economies. Now, of course, these are based on actual GDP ratios. Um, multiple things have been taken into account. And... Obviously, as I said, the top thing is GDP um, and uh, national gross product. And all these statistics and ranks are based on most recent estimates by Forbes. That is where I got this. all these statistics from was from Forbes. Not from crappy Wikipedia or something like that, which is not reliable in the least. Today I will be doing honorable mentions first. In rank up and then start at number 10. First honorable mention Thailand, which I'm trying to remember is ranked somewhere around like 30 or something, largest world economy. Now, right now, of the top 100 economies in the world, believe it or not, 51 of them are corporations, only 49 of them are actual nations, countries. But these are the top largest national economies, country economies. Number 23, which is honorable mention. Now, there's going to be some skipping numbers. That's because of corporation stuff in between, which are not included. Uh, which, Argentina is currently the 23rd largest world economy. Coming at number 22 is Saudi Arabia. Coming in at number 21 is uh, from Eastern Europe, Poland which is actually uh, the land of my grandmother on my dad's side of the family. is from Poland. Number 20, the Netherlands. Number 19, Taiwan, which is definitely a growing and emerging economy in Asia, without a shadow of a doubt. Number 18, Australia, which is becoming a major agriculture powerhouse in the world. Once upon a time, we were unrivaled, number one agricultural country in the world, but now Australia is becoming the major powerhouse in agriculture. Coming in at number 17 is Iran. The reason why Iran is such a big powerhouse money-wise compared to most Middle Eastern nations is, one, they make a lot of money on oil, and they are sitting on one of the top five largest natural oil reserves in the world. And currently, Iran is estimated to have the second largest natural gas reserve in the world. Second only to, of course, Russia. And that's where their money really comes from, is natural gas. Though they also make a lot of money from oil, but that's the main area. Uh, coming in number 16 is uh, Indonesia. And of course, also another Asian nation. Asia really is be replacing Europe as the power continent. Coming in number 15, another Middle Eastern country, but has some more Western style culture in it, though they're trying to wipe it out, basically, the Western influence. And that is the nation Turkey, which is a nation that goes back many thousand years ago. Historically speaking, Turkey has played major roles throughout history. Coming in number 14 is our neighbors to the north, that being Canada. Number 13, Republic of Korea, or also known as South Korea. But, um, yeah, South Korea is now the 13th largest world economy. No surprise, shouldn't be a surprise, given South Korea is, I think, eventually going to become the new Japan really in the technology area thanks to country or rather companies such as say Samsung and many others definitely South Korea is becoming a major tech power in the world coming at number 12 
I don't understand how this country is number 12 because of all the economic problems they've been having. And that is uh, Spain. Which um, does probably make that's still a decent amount of money off of their tourism industry. And that's really the only area because they're not really doing much production um, from normal areas of like development and things of that which they need to work on rebuilding up their economy because they've been going through a lot of economic hard times in the last several years. Coming in, number 11 is our neighbors to the south, Mexico. And yeah, there's a, there's a lot of issues I have with Mexico, obviously, the reason why they're number 11 partially is because of a lot of money comes from the United States and gets sent back down there because there's so many Hispanics that live in the United States today. And, yeah, but it's understanding why so many Hispanics come up here because the, the hourly wages in Mexico are far lower overall compared to here. Plus, if you look at like the exchange rate, even though the dollar is at the lowest peak it's been in quite a long time, it's still worth far more than the peso. So that's no surprise as well. And the influx of Hispanic culture is, I remember back, frankly, in the 1990s, culturally speaking, that there wasn't nearly the levels of hatred there is now in the country. And not to mention, I mean, in the late nice things like salsa music came out of Mexico and Central America up here. And frankly, I really personally enjoy things like that from uh, the culture down there. And I love the history. That's one thing. Mexico is a very interesting and fascinating country, historically speaking, given the Aztecs basically founded that nation. Coming in, number 10. Though... I still don't know how this is the 10th largest world economy, personally, because I don't know really what Italy produces. And yeah, number 10 is Italy. And I don't understand how they are number one, given the fact Italy, really the only area they may make any money really is off of tourism, to be fair. And obviously most of that is off of tourism in Rome, and tourism from also, obviously, Venice. Venice is such a beautiful looking city from stuff. I mean, I would say if I could afford to, you know, go travel the world and stuff, I could tell you certainly Rome would probably be in the top cities outside North America that I would most want to visit because my favorite subject is history. Well, history slash theology, but my point is this, and that is Italy definitely is a fascinating country because, I mean, though it was once, of course, Rome, now Rome is merely a, just the major city, and given also you have the Vatican in really part of Rome, though they call themselves their own individual little city, surrounded by giant walls. Um, but yeah, I mean, the fact is, Italy remains very influential, especially in the religious aspect, because of the Vatican, which influences an estimated 1.2 billion Catholics around the world. That's pretty big numbers, because that makes up 60% of all Christians worldwide. That's some serious statistics right there. But yeah, number 10 is Italy. Number 9 is the now fast-growing, I see this nation is possibly... The next China, in a lot of ways, because they're, though, they're not energy independent, just, uh, well, China's not energy independent, I should say. This nation is. In fact, 90% of all their oil and things in the world are produced in their own country, domestically. They have a really great uh, boosting economy, and that being Brazil. Though they have a lot of issues with things such as certain types of diseases and sicknesses. It's one thing they really need to work on, given they're now one of the top ten world economies. And at number nine. But I foresee them in probably the next 20 years or so, 
they could possibly be up around like the sixth, if not the fifth largest world economy within the next 10 to 20 years. If they keep growing at the pace that right now that they are going, I foresee a great future for Brazil as a major power player. And given their energy dependent, uh, and unlike us, where we use corn for ethanol, they use sugar cane for ethanol. And they're the largest, of course, producer of sugar cane, or sugar rather, in the world. That's right. In fact, I believe, let's not check, like 50-60% of all the sugar that's consumed in the United States is provided by Brazil. If that says anything right there. They are definitely a major power player now and growing at a very amazing rate. Coming in number eight, we go back to Western Europe. And uh, this is, of course, the nation which we will always know as Viva la France. Uh, France comes in at number eight. They actually still, the reason why they're still ranked as high as they are is because that... Though they've been having some job issues and stuff as of late, their job ranks and stuff are a lot better than a lot of European nations are of nowadays. By far, they have one of the better economies, obviously. And uh, they have one of the lower unemployment rates. I think last time I checked, France's unemployment rate is like 7-8%. That's still a lot, 7 or 8%. But compared to going to countries such as, say, Greece, which has like a 30 or like a 30 some percent unemployment rate like one out of three people are unemployed in Greece yeah that says how bad things are in Greece that's a much higher statistic than even the uh, depression here in America was uh, but France is of course best well known for obviously culture uh, such as food which their food really is an art unto itself and they produce some really good food. I can personally say, food I've personally tried French food, obviously. I love calamari, one of my personal favorites. Frog legs aren't bad either, to be fair. Uh, coming in at, and of course, they're best well known, obviously, for the Louvre. And they're also very well known thanks to Leonardo da Vinci, which was an incredible man in his time. Coming in at number seven, the UK, the United Kingdom, which is, of course, a combination of actually three countries. It's a combination, obviously, of England, with uh, Wales, and, of course, with Scotland. And England is such a fascinating nation, really. And there's fascinations with each. And interestingly, of those three nations that are part of the United Kingdom, Wales is the only one that the national language is not English, believe it or not. It's actually Welsh. Though most people still speak English, that is their official national language for Wales, is Welsh. Um, but yeah, they are definitely a fascinating country, England is, which is still a power player, though it's more because of banking. Let's face it, London is basically the major like center of banking really for Western Europe uh, and more for Eastern Europe and stuff I guess you could say really the two largest banking institutions in Europe are London in England and the other one will be a little bit higher the nation it's in uh, but yes England has had a great amount of influence throughout the world I mean back when you have the British Empire I mean look at like, they greatly influenced, obviously, India, they greatly influenced China, and that's probably why tea is so popular in places like India and other places. It's because the Brits do love their spot of tea, and their tea time. And I respect that. I mean, come on. Britons produce some great stuff. Good tea, um, fish and chips, and of course, we can't forget great movies, and great literature, uh, great novels. Of course, in modern day, they produce some great works of art, such as uh, the Harry Potter series by uh, J.K. Rowling. And if you want to go a little farther back, J.R.R. Tolkien, with Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and of course, The Cimmerillion, 
and many other great books, and Philip Pullman, which did the uh, Dark Materials, or Golden Compass, or there in England, Northern Lights series. But overall, it's just England has had a great amount of influence over the world for many a long time. Really, their major power play role only ended after the First World War. And let's face it, they're definitely going to go down history as one of the most important nations in modern day rising of, say, uh, democracy and things like that. Of course, they're a constitutional monarchy, obviously. And you have to thank them for the creation of BBC, producing many great TV shows, such as Doctor Who and many others. But economically, that's where their power really lies, is in banking. Uh, coming in at number six is the Russian Federation. Russia comes in at number six. A lot of their money obviously comes from areas such as uh, natural gas, which they supply, I believe, like 55% of all natural gas consumed in Europe is provided by Russia. Uh, Russia sits on the largest natural gas reserve in the world and sits on the second largest uh, oil reserve in the entire world. The largest oil reserve in the world is in the unpopulated uh, frozen tundra known as the Antarctic which is fascinating, I might add. But yes, that's where Russian power comes from, is their natural resources. But they're fascinating because there's so many different style cultures and stuff in Russia. Because in Western Russia, you have like St. Petersburg, and more culture that you might see in, say, uh, Belgium, the Netherlands, or like Germany and places. And you come to Eastern Russia, where, of course, you have the capital of Russia, obviously, and that being Moscow, uh, which is definitely a major power player, being the home of the largest building in the world that was uh, made by, yeah, by uh, Mason builders, and it's the largest in the world, and that being, obviously, the Kremlin. And a lot of people today, well, it's kind of divided, but a lot of people today, you Vladimir Putin as the leader of the freak world now. Now, obviously, Western Europe disagrees with this. I personally am not one of those Americans who despises Putin. In fact, I think, personally, that he's been a great political leader. He's a leader with a backbone. And I can't say that about a lot of the politicians here in America. Sorry I'm getting into politics. Kind of hard time, and I have a lot of people off and on keep Game trying to get me to bring up politics on my YouTube channel and wonder why I try to stay neutral. Mainly because I want to do entertainment stuff. I don't really want to get my political views or, you know, uh, spiritual slash non-religious viewpoints out there. I want to try to keep my own personal views to myself. Because I'm not one of those that likes to have drama on my YouTube channel like a lot of other YouTubers may have had in the more recent several months, such as the Fine Bros and others. I don't want to have that kind of issues or problems. So that's why I don't really bring it up. But I personally, yeah, I respect Putin for a lot of things he's done. He's really rebuilt the Russian economy from the ground up since he's been in office since 2000. And of course his uh, basically secondary in command, Dmitry Medved. I try my best to pronounce these names as best as I can, as correct and precise as I can. Coming in at number five is the land of my, actually, my dad's father. And also on my mother's side, this is the number one largest percentage-wise nationality I am. It's the only one I have on both sides of my family. And that is Germany. Yes. Predominantly German blood. And definitely Germany, fascinating nation. Obviously, there's a reason why they are still in the top five world economies. So they've dropped in rank over the last 20 years from like third place. But they've rebuilt themselves up after World War II incredibly well. And as I said, there are two major banking institutions in Europe. For Western Europe, it's London, England. 
For the rest of Europe, it is Frankfurt, Germany, or Deutschland, if you will. And Germany's produced a lot of great stuff, mm -hmm. not just really good food like uh, kebabs or, uh, of course, uh, things like apple strudel and many other good foods, especially their sausages. They make really good, they have really good sausage over there, pork sausage and all kinds of good stuff. But uh, also, as I said, major banking institution Frankfurt is also the home of the uh, European, was it, oh yes, they're the home of the European Central Bank, which is, you know, the branch of the World Central Bank. It's basically the main bank over all of Europe in economic affairs. Just like here in America, our division is located in New York City for the North American Central Bank. But everyone basically has a central bank in their respective areas of the world. And Germany has produced also a lot of great music, a lot of good rock and metal music to be fair. Bands like Scorpions, Eisbrusche, Mega Herds, uh, Rammstein, or Rammstein, however you want to pronounce it, and many other great musicians and music from Germany. And I have to respect them for also their determination, their hard work ethic. I have nothing but the utmost respect for Germany, and I just hope they can get through the horrible situation they're in right now with the huge flock of immigrants coming in and basically trying to destroy the German culture. And I guess I'm going to have to state one political viewpoint I have, which is I'm very anti-multiculturalism. I believe that a nation ha should have a particular mandatory culture, like, uh, for instance, Russia and Australia and Japan and others have. A certain way of life you must live. You become a citizen of that nation. You must accept that way of life and reject your old way of life. You must accept it, otherwise you have no place in their society or nation. And I feel that's how the United States needs to be. That's how Canada needs to be. And that's frankly how all of Europe needs to be. One of the only European countries that actually has the guts to stand up for what they believe in is uh, the homeland of actually the other nationality in my family, being Irish. And yeah, Ireland is one of the only European nations that has stood up against multiculturalism, is anti against it, and it's predominantly only two religions, Christianity and Paganism, which of course being the way of the Celts. Which there's nothing wrong with that, but that's just how I feel. Coming at number four is definitely I call the new China. Except a little growing more in the technology field more so than China is, speed wise. And this is, of course, number four being India, which was greatly influenced, as I mentioned before, by England, of course. And definitely India is a fascinating country, beautiful art, beautiful music. And I love the history of the nation. They're one of the oldest countries, been around for more than 4,500 years. And they have one of the five oldest religions recorded in human history. Maybe even possibly the top three. And they have one of the oldest known symbols, the swastika, actually comes from the origins of India. And yeah, people want to say the swastika is evil because, well, guess what? It was a different, inverted, or different style version of the swastika that Hitler actually used because he believed in the power of symbolism and stuff, which is why he harnessed the power of the swastika. And, frankly, the swastika actually has been around for many thousands of years. I mean, you can find the swastika in stuff in, for instance, uh, Buddhism, um, Shinto, and especially its origins really come from India, from, of course, early day Hinduism. And that's one thing. As I said, I study theology, being one of my favorite subjects. And uh, one thing I have found in theology is Hinduism is quite fascinating. They actually basically have a god for almost everything. The obvious layers select the particular ones they're best well known for. Shakti, uh, Krishna, Shiva... Uh, Ganesha, and many others. Um, 
and of course, obviously, Hinduism is sort of interesting. It does have some of the basic teachings and philosophies of like Buddhism and many things, but many people believe that Buddha actually took a lot of teachings and stuff from actually Hinduism, given he lived about 25, 2600 years ago, and Buddhism, uh, Hinduism predates him by like 2000 years. But yeah, and India really is a really amazing growing country, a major powerhouse now in the world. It's hard to believe they're now surpassed Germany for fourth place. And I see a great future ahead of India. Hopefully they can just improve a lot of things in their culture. Coming in at number three is my personal favorite country I most want to move to if I can eventually move higher up in the ranks of the company I'm with which uh, I'm not going to mention for obvious reasons. I'm not going to mention where I work because I never know if somebody from where I work might see one of my videos, so I'm not going to mention the company. But I am happy recently I was promoted into management, so I'm glad about that. I'll still try to do as much of these YouTube videos as I can, though. But uh, number three is Japan, which is predominantly, of course, uh, Shinto. And obviously the biggest chunk of their economy comes from technology development. That's where their real power lies, is in the intelligence. And I respect Japan for their high intelligence, for the great technological developments they've made over the years. Many companies such as Sony and others were really ones who paved the way in that area and field. Um, they've also, of course, produced now probably the most successful car company in the world, Toyota, and other respectful companies such as Nissan and many others. And I respect Japan for their great work ethic, for their respecting of uh, elders and knowledge and wisdom, and I have nothing but the utmost respect for Japan. Definitely by far my favorite culture. And, as I've said, someday if I can afford to, I would love to move over to Japan. I mean, that'd be awesome. Great Japanese food all the time. Go to the karaoke bars. Just enjoy some good music. Watch the latest animes. But right now I'm in the process of trying to learn Japanese. Because I'm not going to try to go to a country unless I can actually speak at least the basics of the language because I believe in showing the proper respect that nation deserves. And Japan does deserve a lot of respect, in my view. And their influence on American culture is insane. Obviously, given my YouTube channel name is Goku Sun DBZ, obviously Japan's a big influence on me. You can obviously tell that. Coming at number two is the is projecting the next like twenty years of course to overtake the United States is the largest world economy. And number two being, of course, China, which has three major power uh, cities in their nation. Shanghai, which is definitely becoming a major power player. You have Hong Kong, which was once under the influence of power of England. And you, of course, have the major power, the capital of China, Beijing. Beijing and has fascinating mystery, like, for instance, the Forbidden City and many other things. And music, I've listened to quite a bit of uh, Chinese pop, I've listened to Chinese rock, I've listened to traditional Chinese music because I used to have a friend uh, who, uh, she moved here from right around the Shanghai area. But, and I believe in always showing proper respect, like if I go, for instance, to a Chinese restaurant, I always, when I leave, I always say thank you in, of course, Mandarin Chinese. Xi Xi, or Xi Xi, just depends on what dialect. But I use Shishi because that's a Mandarin dialect. And I believe in showing proper respect. Anyways, of course, number one, the United States, the USA. Um, sadly, in more recent years, we our major power isn't as much the economy as it used to be. You know, we still have development in technology and things of that, thanks to uh, nations or rather companies such as, say, uh, Microsoft, and, uh, of course, companies, hipster company like Apple, and, of course, 
the great company Google, which is definitely a good one. Uh, another, of course, major power growing companies, obviously Facebook, Amazon, and many others. And so many great titans of business were Americans. Uh, Ted Turner, he was a revolutionary when it came to television. TBS, TNT, uh, TNN, or now known as Spike TV, uh, Cartoon Network, you name it. He was greatly influential on things. He's also, of course, a big influence on the United Nations. And he foresaw a great future in television, though now that's becoming the dying breed, television. And now it's Internet. And number, also I want to say a few other things before I get off. Of course, right now we are going through, of course, our election right now here in the United States 2016. And it's now already pretty much been decided who the front runner is and who is getting, of course, on one side, the GOP nomination. Of course, that being uh, Donald Trump, which just spoke a few days ago at about 45 minutes away from the city I live in. Uh, he spoke in Charleston, West Virginia. And over 12,000 people showed up. And about a week and a half ago, here in Huntington, where I live, the second largest city in the state, uh, we had Bernie Sanders speak. And we had a over 7,000 people show up for Sanders. So quite a good turnout for both Trump and Sanders. Um, and Hillary got basically booed out of the state. It's pretty funny. Everyone here, basically all the Sanders and Trump supporters, all joined forces protesting Hillary. Sadly, I had to work, so I didn't get to be part of that. I did see and get to listen to Sanders speak. And he did make some good points on things. But Trump made good points in coal industry, which is very important to the area of the nation I live in. Um, anyways, I'll get off. Peace out. This is Goku Sun DBZ. I'll see you next time here in YouTube land. And I just want to say, I hope all of you have a good upcoming week to wherever, whichever country in the world you all live, whether you live here in North America, Central America, South America, Asia, Europe, Russia, which I consider them own kind of place because they're in both Europe and Asia, uh, Australia, Africa. I hope you all have a good upcoming week, and I hope you all have a good rest of May and spring. And I'll see you all next time back here in YouTube land soon enough for a couple of comic book reviews I'm working on right now. But anyways, hopefully I get this upload soon. And same YouTube time, same YouTube channel.